in this video we're going to be talking about why PC gaming, and I mean not just the concept PC, like it has to be released on a PC, but rather like if you have the right programs, the right graphics card, just the specs, you know, that runs a computer, a custom laptop or desk tower, for example, you know, it's actually more powerful and more affordable than that of a console. And they're actually much easier to fix, too, and I'll explain why. You see, consoles have been around because, for the most part, they've been cheaper to manufacture than that of, let's say, you know, a PC. Now, if you want a really, really good video to go, like, really look at, or sorry, uh, Review Tech USA made a video about this. It's called, you know, you can get this com gaming computer for $250. And it's not the best one out there, but it's pretty good for what, you know, it's a custom. It, it just goes to show you that you can make a custom computer for a few hundred bucks, and it's, like, really spot-on perfect almost. Like, you know, you can literally play anything, and it, and it works. It, it's probably even better without, you know, even better than consoles, and you're, they're easier to fix. You know, people say they're not, but, you know, if you can make it, you can definitely break it. You can definitely fix it, too. Um, I'll give you another example. Um, PC gaming, and again, when I say PC gaming, not just if it's released on a PC console interface, but rather a, like, you can just look at these games and say that, you know, if it's released on the PS4, it's eventually going to find its way on the Internet. You could eventually make a program, might take a while, and you could run that, and if your specs are correct and spot on, you could actually emulate that even better than the PS4. Even though, let's be honest, you know, it's technology. It's still, it's just another way of running this stuff. But, again, you know, computers can run Microsoft, they can run Windows, they can run Linux, you can run Macintoshes, even though those are different type of computers. But, you know, all the different type of software companies that are out there. So many different types of computers and so many different types of abilities. You know, a lot of people don't realize what a computer is capable of doing. And it's actually very impressive with what people have been able to come up with over the years as far as software and hardware. Software being like the programs that you use on a computer and hardware, like the physical components that actually run the operating system and all that, or rather just make the physical, you know, did, you know, like the physical power of, you know, turning it on and actually running and then it works and then it's not going to overheat and blow up or, you know, start like that. So it works. It's a machine. But what's really cool about this technology, and the same thing with PC gaming, you know, PC gaming in general, you can put a lot more RAM, CPU, GPU, I cores, processors, RAM, and it can be actually better than that of like, like, um, Sony's, PS, PlayStation's, and all that, and, I mean, they're still fast enough to run the games, don't get me wrong, but at the same time, though, you know, you'd be surprised that there have actually been games that people have released, like, on the PlayStation Portable that were, like, 30 frames per second, and then, like, you know, later they released them on a PS emulator, for example, PSP, PP, SS, PP, and what's funny about it is that they were actually able to run those games 60 frames per second, rather than just 30 frames. So, it's kind of interesting when you think about that, that you know, give it enough technology, and a company can re-innovate what was already created. So, like, they expand upon what was already created, and they reorganize and rehabilitate what was already made at one point. And, and you see this because consoles, they're really interesting. Like, for example, I mean, I still have a Super Nintendo, and I just bought a copy of Mega Man X3 the other day. I had to spend almost $300 to get it, but I still have it nonetheless, though. And I use this a lot in some of these videos I make because it, it raises a good point that, you know, you can have a game that's, like, real easy to make. It's Mega Man X3, you know, you could take, like, a basic 99, Windows 98, and you could probably run it no problem. It, it's not, it doesn't take that much RAM to run a game like that. But, like, you could have, like, a game like uh, Elder Scrolls Skyrim, for example, and, like, you know, you'd be surprised that, like, you know, there's been actually some deboggling debates that, you know, like, Nintendo's Switch, for example, is not going to be able to run that. And, you know, we're, we're, and because it's not as powerful as the PS4 or the PS3 and the Xbox One and Xbox 360, even back in the day when that game was running on it, it's like, you know, it just comes down to specs and, you know, depending on the games that they want to make. Sure, yeah, gameplay is more important than the graphics and the, 
but overall, it's what the it's it's what the console comes down to. If the specs can't run it, then really, in some way, shape, or form, it's going to limit what can be produced on it. And again, you know, with a custom computer, I mean, yes, you're even with laptops and desktops and towers, whatever you want to call, it, you can run so many different apps. You can, even with cell phones, you know, I think I got a 5s still, and it's still powerful. You know, I mean, yeah, they're more expensive than let's say, well, I mean, phones are more expensive than consoles are, but. At the same time, though, it's because they overcharge. But you'd be surprised, though, that even with a PC, though, that's still roughly like 300 bucks. Maybe some gaming computers can go for like 700, 1200, maybe even two grand. I had one of my friends play like two grand for it, and you know, I I, I believe he. I told him I looked at like what he had it as. I mean, he builds computers too, but he kind of just wanted to buy one because he wasn't really right off the bat like ready to. He didn't want to wait like a month or two before he finally got all the parts when they came. But what had happened was, because right around the time he was busy, so he just bought it to save time. And, and that's understandable. I, I, I don't judge him for doing that. But at the same time, though, it's like, you know, I, I was looking at what he was telling me, and he said he spent two grand on it. It was one of those Alienware towers, which is actually really cool. But at the same time, though, he could have made this with the same specs, but maybe with a different tower, though. He could have made it for like roughly 700 bucks, so he could have saved 1,300 dollars. But again, if he wanted to do that, that's fine. That's his call. But you know, he could have saved money if he would have made a custom one, refurbished it, and yeah, roughly maybe maybe 800 bucks, maybe a little bit less, you know, with the specs he was going for. But um, it's it's interesting though that you know, like like I said though, you know, you can make a custom made computer, and they're easier to fix because they're just you can open them up than in that of a console, a laptop, and if done correctly, it's cheaper and easier. Still takes a little bit of time, you still gotta know what you're doing. But you can find tutorials on the YouTube and all that and the internet. People could help you out. There's people who know these things like the back of their hands. You know, um, you know, maybe how they go about fixing it might actually be questionable, but and their services to do so. But again it's business that's not always yeah, again, you know, just be careful what you get yourself into. Because you really can't trust what people say. But what I'm trying to say, though, in this case is that, you know, if you really think about, um, you know, like the way computers are built and all that, and if you do it yourself, I mean, you you can literally build a custom-made computer, and you'd be surprised it could even run better than that of Windows, or not, not Windows, but, uh, but a PS4 or an Xbox One, the specs, and, and it's just like, you know, if, if it wasn't for the fact that people love their consoles, the consoles would, would be dying. Because, you know, you know you could take the games that are on a console and then later on just build them up to another, you know, build them up to another, you know, you could put them on another console and there you go. You can play them better as long as your computer's got the right specs. And, you know, people say it's not the same experience. And, and, and in some ways I see what you're saying, yes, you know, it's definitely different. But at the same time, though, it's uh, just a different way to play it, because that's what came out first. But it's really interesting, though, because, like, if everybody was able to put those games on their computer... Okay, still, you know, you have to buy the game, sure, yes. But I believe that everything will go all digital if um, everything's eventually on a computer. Sort of. Unless they make physical copies for it, still. But I just think it's crazy, because, like, you know, whenever... Well, they could release a console, too, that's, uh, you can only connect it to the internet and download stuff. Or you have to go out and get a, buy a serial key, and then you can connect it to the Wi-Fi, or, you know, but, uh, how, however that's going to work. But either way, it's debatable. But the way I look at it, though, I feel that if a company is going to take the time to make something all digital, they're going to have to have a very good reason, and they're going to have to know exactly how they want to do it, because, you know, going all digital is either going to encourage people to pirate their stuff or buy their games. Because when you put things on the internet, I mean, again, like I said, I buy my games. I've got a huge collection of stuff in that closet right there. But there are so many games out there that you would be surprised that, like, if you just have it on the internet and you either have the serial keys or the game, there, you'd be surprised that people will probably find a way to get around that. Just, just, just like that. Because, you know, Video games have gotten to the point where, like, people try to take advantage of people. So people, like, download the games, even after they buy the games, you know. 
back them up. Because, you know, they don't want, like, to have to pay, like, $300, like I did, in some aspects, where, you know, like, some of these games are, like, expensive. You know, uh, he's... Like, anybody who spends time with cartridges and all that knows that before the internet existed, this is how video games used to be, because that's how it started off. But now it's gotten to the point where, again, if every, not to mention if everything does go all digital, but just because PC gaming exists. I mean, not, not just like, not just because you can run PC games as well as consoles, and any game can go on a, con on a PC because it's more powerful, more innovative, and it's even gotten to the point where it's gotten cheaper. But the reason why now PCs are actually becoming much more affordable is because technology has gotten so powerful that the PCs that you could get even cheaper right around $300 now are roughly faster to run than the consoles are. Because consoles have gotten to the point where, you know, yes, they're still good, but at the same time, though, they're just really more collector's items at the same time because, like, you can buy, like, a, a copy of, like, let's say a console, like a console PS3 version of, like, maybe a specific JRPG, and you could probably take that, if your console supports Blu-ray, you can put that on your computer, and you can play it very fine, and it probably runs faster, depending on the specs. And assuming you got the right program to to em, em, emulate that. It's just, it's just crazy how, like, technology has changed, and how people have been able to find ways to, like, speed up bits and bytes, and, and graphics cards, and cell processors and uh, like all these all just all these little components that just make up like this fantasy world that somebody else designed and it's just so cool like what people came up with you know the video game is to interact with something and it's just cool like what people have created over the years to signify you know some sort of entertainment and I believe that it's just going to keep getting even better because it's inevitable. It's it's just technology. You can't change technology because it's too big to control. It's just something that finds its way out there. It's innovation. It's, you know, and that's how it will be. Consoles are going to continue to get expensive because of the, un, unless they keep making it like this. But then PCs are going to keep getting cheaper, even though the newer ones are really expensive. But even those ones are actually much more powerful than, let's say, Nintendo's, like Wii U and you know, Nintendo Switch and PS4 and Nintendo, uh, Sony's PS4 and uh, Microsoft's Xbox One, you know, or the Odyssey, not the Odyssey, <laughs> the Odyssey. I remember reading a joke somebody said on the internet, they say, my Atari 2600 and Odyssey can play PS4 game. <laughs> that was funny. Made me laugh. Um, what else, what else was there? Um, it's just crazy to think that, you know, People have figured that out. And, and it's like in another 20 years, what will people have in 20 years? Like innovations that have just gone so well that it just, you know, because again, custom made computers. If you really want to make a custom made computer, you figure out what your computer is able to support and then you put it together somehow. And then once you have yourself a very powerful machine, you can literally play anything on it. Innovation and and, um, and processors. I remember one of my friends, he owns a video game shop, as well as a, uh, he might have shady tactics there, but, you know, I get he has, he's got to make money in a lot of cases. But at the same time, though, he has shown me a lot of good things, like how to fix computers. And you just really don't learn these things unless you really start watching videos on YouTube. Like, you, um, you have, like, consoles and you take them apart you fix them like like take the nes and the snes like the pin connectors and the and i mean these are easy to replace i mean maybe it only costs like 30 bucks to get another one but it's like it's just really cool to think like how like like when cartridges were the thing like back in the day and i mean i know they're still around because nintendo switch is going to do the same thing but it's just really cool to think that you know back in the day that that's how they used to connect it you would take the cartridge you put it down and then you turn it on and and, and then it would connect to the pins and then it would read the from the from the cartridge from the internal memory, and then it would come up on the screen, assuming that the AV cables were plugged in correctly and it still worked, and the power supply still worked, and the motherboard wasn't blown in the actual console. It was just really cool to think that, and you take a controller, plug it in, and you could play it. You know, it just it's cool. It was just it was an idea that really stood out, 
and then once people found a way to really turn it into a reality, like this is what we've got. And then computers do the same thing. You know, you take a program, you can run it faster, or how many different combinations of ways there are, how many ways to fix it, how many ways to build them. You know, you know what I mean? It's endless. It, it, it just gets even better because there's ideas we haven't even thought up of yet. So many of them we haven't even thought up of yet. You know, it's just, it's, it's just amazing how technology really is entertaining to build, experience, and just just play. I mean, even if, if you don't want to classify that as experience, that's what, make, that's what made technology so great. Because you could enjoy it because of what it was capable of doing. Because it wasn't like anything else people have ever seen at this time. But we've proven that wrong over and over again because the people that live in the cyber age of technology, people have been able to see what they could build, how specs were, what consoles are better than others, or uh, what, what, what a console is even capable of doing in the first place. You know, uh, you want another good example of a game. Uh, look at... Uh, Look at task runs, tool-assisted speed runs where you play a game frame by frame. They take a long time to make, but when done correctly, there's a lot of people out there that they have like task runs for like specific consoles. And um, what they do is um, they play them on an emulator, sure, but like what what happens is over time, once they're getting what they're done recording that, um, they show you like what the console was capable of doing, and they push the game to its limits. What like you know how fast the game was able to render the graphics like up until a specific distance, and like all these things and all these cool tricks that you couldn't do like you could only do it with like a computer versus like human reflex, and even the best players in the world couldn't even compete with that. It was just really cool to think that you know somebody could put together a program, and then like the rendering, the specs that this console ran on. You know, and then there was people that you know because they had such good memories of some of these games growing up, they could go back and recreate them, and and just with a program that was even more powerful than the consoles that were ten years ago. Like just to give you an example, you know, a Goldeneye for example, you know, for the N64 it came out in 1997, based on the 1995 James Bond movie. You know, so many people still love that game and they still play it. Heck, I even still play it because it's just, it, it's fun. You know, it's not, okay, maybe it's not the best first-person shooter game of all time now, but, but I mean, it, it was still something. It was dip, it was fairly difficult. It was, it made you feel like you were actually a spy. I mean, the, the concept made a lot of sense. It was a well-designed game. It was fairly difficult, and, you know, it just proves that being a spy isn't easy. And James Bond must have had a hell of a time getting out of certain <laughs> locations, you know, even though he's not, even though he, it's just a movie, yes, but... You know, his character, though, you know, if he was in that exact situation, I'd be like, or Hitman, Hitman, uh, Agent, was it Agent 42 or 32? I, I can't remember. You know, uh, you know, uh, he, you know, even he had moments where he had to get through and stuff like that, and, you know, fictional character or not, sure, but, you know, being a spy, being, being a superhuman ain't, ain't easy, <laughs> you know, when you really think about it. But anyways, that's just to kind of uh, explain how how this whole thing works. You know, Nintendo's been around for a while, sure, but at the same time, though, Sony and Microsoft have been around for a while, and it's it's only like it's just going to show you that there's only so much you can do before you have to come up with new innovations to really make money, because like that's just the competition in the field in the tech technological age. You know, PCs have been around for a while. People have always made the joke saying, "Oh, nobody cares about PC gaming. It's a bunch of shit anyway." But if you really think about it, though, you know, it's, it doesn't have to just be the games that are on the PC. The bigger story could be just what the what the console, like, what the PC itself is capable of reading off. And because they're more powerful than PCs and, or, I mean, other PCs as well as, like, other consoles and, you know, even phones, for example, you'd be surprised that nobody, I mean, aside from, like, maybe if you want to still buy a console, you really don't need to. Because you don't, if you have the right programs and the right specs on your laptop, you could play any, P, on a, any console game on your PC. And you just need the right hard drive, but even those are easy to replace and cheaper than that of, like, a console where you might even have to buy more than one part. Like, for example, like, if a console goes, you might not actually be... I'll give you a more realistic example. Like, when the PS3 was out, there was uh, people that, you know, like, if you were to put a Blu-ray disc player for, like, a tower, let's say, would be a lot easier to replace, and it's a lot cheaper than that of a console. Because in the console, it might not just be the laser that goes, or the disk drive. It might actually be the whole motherboard, too, because, like, there's... What's weird is, it, it kind of gets a little confusing, because I don't know I don't know the part names off the top of my head, but they're actually soldered in with other parts. So, rather than actually buying just individual parts, you might actually have to buy a 
a new piece of that total. So it's like you have a more expensive version of a less powerful machine, but still powerful than that of a custom-made uh, PC that's actually cheaper and easier to make because like they don't have like all those soldered parts together, or maybe it's just a different model number, but it's also a different kind of um, Blu-ray player that actually leads that console to become more powerful in the end. And I mean, and not just that, but it's like um, it's just how like technology is and. You know, it's because like you know, PCs are are different than um, are uh, different than consoles. It's because you know, and, and, and again, I can go on forever, but it's it just pretty much to show you that there's like different concepts of this, and combined with everything going all digital digital distribution later on, it's just going to be a different. It's just going to be a different age of technology, and it's just going to be there. You know, how people are going to handle it will probably be the major problem because again, nobody knows how to stop piracy and. You know, again, I'll always buy my stuff, I'll back it up, but at the same time, there will be stuff that's never released outside of Japan that, you know, no one is ever going to translate, so that's what I translate for people. So, I mean, it's it's perfectly legal with what I'm doing, but what I'm saying, though, is, you know, when you really usher in a new age, I mean, again, going back to the day and age when people said that cassettes were going to last forever, but when CDs came out and everything was going off the internet, everybody was freaking out because they thought, oh, no, we're going to go out of business because nobody's going to care about this stuff. But you'd be surprised how many people are still around. You know, people just underestimate things instead of embrace technology. Because certain people's monopolizations can't last as long as they'd like it to. Because somebody else was smart enough to create something else that really defeated every single thing that some of these other companies have thrown out there. It's just the circle of evolution is what it is. But at the same time, though, it's really amazing what we humans have been able to come up with. And so, I'll leave it to that. But again, comment, rate, subscribe, and share this video. What do you guys think about the age of digital distribution as well as PCs being better than uh, consoles? Personally, I like them both. But if you're trying to just spend money on something, uh, what I would recommend doing is, if you, if you can, find a really cheap desktop that actually is in good condition, and then just take out all the components but ask the person that you're buying, like, what is the maximum, like, RAM processor, iCores that you can put in it. Like, you know, like, do some research into, like, what kind of models. And then once you feel that this is the right one, you can just buy all these used parts that are actually still pretty in good condition and they work just fine. And, it, and you got yourself a hell of a machine. Now you just need a monitor to hook it up to. And there you go.